Well, here I am at the beginning of another project. It's uh, mid-April and um, our family are expecting two grandchildren sometime in the near future. And my gift to them and their parents is going to be a rack for drying nappies and small baby clothes, which can be folded up and carried inside or carried outside quite easily uh, if the weather turns, if it starts raining or something like that. So follow with me on my journey of making these nappy racks. I'll just show you what the, the design is. I've done the drawing on the board here. So what you have is, uh, well basically t two crisscross slats on either end and then two horizontal bars, each with a, a series of holes in them. And into each hole is a clothes peg which is held by a, a nail through its middle. So you've got a whole lot of clothes pegs down the side here, and there's a bit of detail. And my pegs not very well drawn, but they hang. And then there's a nail that goes through the middle of the peg, there. And so you can pin nappies up right across. You can get well in this case, in this one, you can get 18 or 19 nappies in there if, you, if you're using cloth nappies. However, if you're not using cloth nappies, these are rem amazingly useful for pinning just little bits of clothing or whatever you want, you know, either across or just individually along there, because you could get say. Um, 36 or 38 little items on there. The, the advantage of it is if it's you put it out in, in, in the sun or wind to dry, as soon as you know the weather turns bad, you just you just grab it, fold it up, and just walk inside, and all of the washing comes inside with you. So that's the background to it. So here are two of the horizontal slats with holes bored into them, and I've decided to join these onto the vertical um, cross cross member slats using a dovetail joints. So these are marked up uh, to be cut for the dovetail joints and at the same time I've cut the ends of the slats. I'll try and get it into focus. Um, you can see here, you can see the ends of the slats. I've cut the dovetail out of there. One of the problems of this is that, um, gee the focus is not good. One of the problems of this is that you're cutting on end grain and it's really tricky and um, I can show you here all my misfires. I've been practicing making dovetail joints because I have a very, a very bad memories of trying to make them when I was a school kid and uh, not being very successful. And um, that's probably the best one I've made so far. And so um, I've learned, for example, that you know, to sawing on the line, you need to saw, you need to know which side of the line you're sawing on. If you saw on on the wrong side of the line, you're going to get a big gap in your dovetail. So I've learned. Um, that you have to saw on the outside of one lot and on the inside of the other lot to make them fit. So um, here's, here's some slats that I'm making two. So this is the first one here and you can see the dovetails in the corners there. I still have to sand these back so they appear nice and smooth and you can see the whole thing is smooth and the pegs will go in there. Okay. So there's the first lot. These are drying. I'll just glued, glued the, the joints up there. So I'll keep you posted with the progress. You can see I've got some paint ready to go and so forth. So having cut the joints on both ends of the wood for the dovetails, um, even if you are a fantastic sawer and you've got the best equipment by hand, when you try and fit this, because you have sort of you sort of deliberately made it a little bit too big, so don't feel as though you're a failure when the joints don't fit together first go, you will need some other implements like files and I've got some very nice triangular profile files, of coarser, finer and don't neglect this. Um, a fret saw is really useful for getting into the corner and for smoothing things over and then the mallet of course um, comes at the end where you glue up and hammer it in with pleasure so um, I'll try and get to that stage and show you what this one turns out like. I've got a bit of work to do though. Okay, so I have filed this joint down and when I put the mail on it, I can just, just feel it wants to go in. So now I'm going to glue it up and give it a tap with the, the rubber mallet and hope that it's, it's, not, it's not so bad that it breaks off the two sides. So um, I'll, I'll and it's always a pleasure if you can knock it in and it looks good. Um, it's a bit hit and miss, there will be gaps and every now and then you get a perfect one which makes you very happy. 
So here we are, it's all glued up and I'm about to fit this and give it a wrap. So there it is, you know, not a bad if there's a bit of a gap here, but the actual dovetail is fitting in beautifully. I've glued it now and, and tapped it in. So that should be, well, pretty permanent. So there we are, the two, two nappy racks, uh, number one and number two all with their dovetail joints along the ends. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the sand over these to pretend that they were all perfectly level and here are all the holes for the pegs will be side by side and there the, the legs have to be drilled in the middle and have a, a, a screw put through there and uh, then painting painting interesting colors so stick with me. So I have begun putting the pins in through the holes to suspend the clothes pegs on um, I had to get just the right length of bullet head nail and they had to be uh, galvanized. I mean if they were too long they would have come through etc. So it's, I, I got them slightly too long and well you can see first of all how the pegs work. Fortunately these pegs um, have, a, have a gap at the top which fits quite conveniently over the nail so that you can then grab the washing from beneath. So that's, that's the way it'll work, there'll all be pegs along here, but you know, lesson for the amateur, when you do something like this, although I try to avoid knots, having knots in a piece of wood like this, which is, was, was weak in any case with these thin bits, um, this knot here, um, you can see on the side here, it's split there, so I'm going to have to put some reinforcing across there. And on the other strut, which is over here, uh, I've had to I've had to actually put the reinforcing onto the glue onto, onto the side because there's a knot there which broke as well through the hole. So um, were I to do this again, I would buy decent timber just for the tops, the bottom, the the legs don't matter matter. And now the dovetail joints are looking fine. I've I've smoothed them off, so that all the dovetails on the corners are looking very professional. And I put uh, a pin through there to hold them. I've glued them already, but I've put a pin through there to hold them in place. So, uh, I've done two, and I've got to put um, pins into the second one. I've got to put the pins into the second one, and then the uh, next step is to start the painting. So, here are the two nappy racks, or drying racks, or baby clothes. Um, this one, each one is the favorite color of the different member of the partnership. Um, and if I had to nominate as one of my most unfavorite things, it's fiddly painting like this. Um, these are, these only have their first coat on them, so you can see this, the undercoat still showing through. And so I'm going to leave them overnight, because I'm told that um, you should wait until this paint's cured properly. It's a little bit, it's, it, it's dry, but it's, it's still soft. So wait until the paint has cured properly. And then once that's happened, um, sand, give it a, a sandpaper and give it a second coat and then maybe even a third coat if you want to. So it's been treated, treated right, undercoat, first coat, second coat. So there they are. Well, the second coat painting is all done. And just a few finishing touches to do before I put them together. And so the next time, and this is the one with the forest green and the navy blue and this is the other one with the dusky pink and the electric blue so those are the two things so next time you see them they will be all put together and on display so here they are the finished uh, baby nappy rack or whatever baby clothes rack um, drying rack um, you can see this one has its pegs already in it um, but we're waiting for, we've ordered some more pegs to go into this one, but this one's coming later on uh, on in the year. And these are the two colors of the parents, the mother and the father, navy blue and forest green. And you can see you, this, you can adjust the length of this cord uh, depending on how wide you want them apart. You can have them narrow or, or not. And the great thing about the pegs is that, um, you know, look, you can, you can take them out. And you can replace the pegs whenever you like. You can use wooden pegs or whatever other pegs you like. So, and here's the other one. Without the pegs, as I say, the pegs are still on order. 
And this is, once again, it's the father and the mother's favorite colors. This is uh, dusky pink, and this is electric blue. So, that's the end of it. Clothes, clothes rack presents for expectant mothers and for their babies. Finished.